I'm Char and today I'm splashing around in Proteus Mod Purgataeus, or insert better pronunciation than mine. I don't play many mods and when I do it's usually to change aspects of games that annoy me, and actually this is also that kind of experiment. I expected to enjoy Proteus, I like just wandering around a landscape and I'm glad there are more of these kinds of games around. But in the case of Proteus, I actually found it a bit frustrating and hard to deal with. And that's mostly the soundscape, I think. I couldn't go near anything without it making noises at me. And it was also tinkly, like walking through a toy store at Christmas. I felt overstimulated and wanted everything to just settle down and leave me in peace. It didn't seem to trust me to find my own reasons for being there. Being on an island without any people brought out the grumpy hermit in me, I guess. So I played this as a test to see if an audiovisual reskin could make me feel different about a game. And yes, apparently it can. This probably isn't meant to feel good, but I know I'm a lot more comfortable with this version. These red paths stand out and I'm torn between following them or rebelling. This is pitched as the video game equivalent of a remix, and I would agree with that. I don't use the word soundscape lightly when talking about Proteus. This is a bit like when someone takes a shiny pop song and does a stripped back and slowed down version. Those are some of the noisier things here, but they don't show up too often. The animals are much less irritating in this version. These are interesting. Some kind of monument, maybe. But it also feels like a meeting place for strange creatures. I don't know what this is supposed to represent, if anything. It's a kind of dark Proteus, but who knows what that means. Maybe if Proteus is about birth through to death as the landscape changes through the seasons, this is more like going through death and back to life again. But that's probably a bit too neat. There's certainly a gothic vibe going on. I feel a bit like I'm in a metal film clip. A name involving purgatory suggests a Catholic interpretation, but I don't think that necessarily has to feed much into everyone's experience, any more than Proteus has to be limited to Greek mythology just because of the suggestion in its name, although of course that doesn't. Proteus is a sea god meaning something like primordial or firstborn, but there could also be the connotation of being able to take many forms which I would take to mean many possible interpretations and experiences, as well as the more obvious aspect of procedurally generated landscapes. If I'm at all on the right track, Proteus mods seem like a pretty natural extension of the concept, and any meaning here is flexible. Lots of insect sounds, but they never seem to get louder or softer. Wow, that time's really beautiful. Gravestones were always in the game, but they make more sense in this darker version, I think. Well, maybe. I suppose death was always relevant, but here it stands out a lot more. Less subtle messages. I once had a minor disagreement with my former boss about whether it was okay to include pictures of cemeteries in a presentation. To me they were calming places and often visited as historical sites or tourist destinations, where you're quite disconnected from anyone's actual death. I didn't really think too much about it, but to my boss cemetery pictures were a bit morbid and weird. 
If that happened now, I could show him the research that suggests people who spend some time thinking about death tend to be more content with their lives, which makes perfect sense to me. But maybe it's for the best that I never had the chance to be that much of a smartass. I grew up in a gold rush area, and the cemeteries around there link back to those times, including a cemetery just for children, except that people keep nicking the gravestones, so over time it's looking less and less like a graveyard, more like a fenced off bit of bushland in the middle of nowhere. Never mind whether I'm morbid, that's what makes me wonder what the fuck is wrong with people. That movement effect is a bit unsettling, like maybe it doesn't want me here. I don't have a heap of insight into this mod, but I also just wanted a chance to ramble. I began making this video when I was working on a master's thesis, which in this case is a lot less impressive than it sounds, trust me. I struggled to take it very seriously because the project wasn't particularly deep. But it was still time consuming and for a while it felt like everything else in my life was put on hold. Or probably that everything would run away without me. And I kept thinking about all the things I was going to do once it was over. And putting a lot of pressure on myself about how I was going to learn another language and an instrument and make more involved videos. And that I would catch up with lots of friends and people I would like to be friends. Even though I'm terrible at that stuff. Or maybe even that I'd try to go on some dates, which I always wuss out of even trying to do. It's all at least partly a distraction from being uncertain about who's going to want to give me a job, and how well I cope with workplace environments even if they do. I don't normally think much about the procedural generation in this game, but I messed up my recording and did this footage in two halves, so was subjected to that a bit more. I like my first world more, I'm not sure what to make of this one. A lot of people really like to replay games to see all the bits and how they fit together. Like, Dear Esther would be a good example where you'll understand a lot better if you play through a few times. But I prefer to leave loose threads and just let one playthrough be my personal version. I own it more and I don't notice as many of the seams holding everything together. There's a build up and falling back down weightlessness to this game that falls away at that moment. Everything seems heavier. There's stillness with things hanging in the air, drifting slowly and disappearing when you get close. There's a lot of anticipation. been listening to the Game Church podcast where they have a guest on, usually a game designer but some critics too, and they discuss what they believe and how they view the world as well as talking about games. And it keeps making me want to talk about that too. I'm not sure why except that people don't usually want to discuss it. I mirror the attitudes of people around me, never outright lying but avoiding any points of difference. And it seems a bit sad that it doesn't feel safe to even toss ideas around. My dad's an atheist of the grumpy aging man variety, parroting Dawkins and getting angry at US schools that refuse to teach evolution. I guess I'm angry too, but I don't blame the same things. My mum's more of a mystery, probably uncertain and unlikely to talk about it, Sometimes I think she has faith and isn't willing to admit it and open herself up to criticism or arguments. My family can be fairly extreme about avoiding conflict. 
My dad's angry, judgmental atheism became much stronger over time, or was just more private when I was younger, particularly when my grandma, his mother-in-law, was still alive. I went to Sunday school and believed in God in the way kids believe what they're told. But by around age 10 or 12, I learnt the word agnostic, which I latched onto and never let go of. I always felt like a scientist, and questioning everything made the most sense to me. I don't like certainty, I don't trust it. These days I would say that I'm not completely convinced that I exist, let alone anything else. I don't trust human senses or thought processes to see the truth in anything. I just have to deal with the uncertainty as well as I can. When my grandma got too old to sit comfortably on a church pew, we stopped going to church. Somehow, despite my lack of belief, I still spent a lot of time around Christianity as a teenager. I joined a youth group primarily as a way to get out of the house on a Friday night. It was partly a country kid thing and not having many options. But my, I guess, best friend at the time was involved, and I met my first boyfriend there. And that was enough incentive at age 15 or 16. It was a strange time though. If you drove that road back then, you'd have noticed the place. It had this giant banner with a terrible pun about how seven days without prayer makes one weak, which made me feel embarrassed for them. No one ever really questioned me about my beliefs. We didn't talk about God or religion much, beyond the occasional short prayer, to give thanks for the good things and comfort for the things people struggle with. This group was big on the idea of people being able to worship in different ways, and for a while we'd visit a different church every week. Everything from the uniting church services I was used to, with fairly traditional sermons and songs, through to Assembly of God with its faith healing and lots of people fainting and crying, which kind of freaked me out, but that's where the younger people and the better music were. For all their words about worshipping in different ways, the Christian people around me still looked down on the AOG and gave the place silly nicknames. I remember someone being mocked behind their back for believing in Adam and Eve as literal people. I probably rolled my eyes at that too, but I spent more time worrying about people than judging them. Even at the AOG, no one ever pressured me to participate, I was just an observer. And there were some really vulnerable people there who were looking for a place to belong and feel safe. People I knew only a little from school, but obviously had some shit going on. There was a lot of focus on surrender, which they did, collapsing in tears that seemed like such an amazing mix of joy and despair. I could see the power in it, but even then I couldn't help but think that they weren't just surrendering to God. They were surrendering to the people in charge, too. I never saw that trust abused, but it felt dangerous. I spent a long time not really thinking about religion or spirituality, even with it all around me. I'd settled that for myself a long time ago and didn't have to revisit it. The simple answer being that I don't believe or disbelieve in anything, but recently it became important to me again. It just isn't about truth for me. The nature of reality usually isn't particularly interesting or important, and neither is the message of being a good person. I think on one level wanting to do good is so simple it doesn't need those lessons, and on another level doing good is so complicated that no religious teaching has ever even tried to help me with it. I don't see any particular connection between belief and ethics. I'm still a scientist, but I wish I'd put more effort into becoming an artist as well. Sometimes how something feels matters more than anything else. I spend a lot of time in imaginary worlds or tossing around imaginary ideas, and that seems pretty relevant to me. In the last year I started meditating on chakras. There are some people in the world who literally believe in chakras but it can also just be a framework for thinking about yourself. Not so far removed from any scientific taxonomy in that sense. Scientists divide the world up in ways they find useful, but those categories are always just one of many ways they could have split things. If my brain likes working with a particular framework, I'm not going to argue. I wish it went without saying, but playing with the irrational and imaginary 
doesn't have to mean accepting the damage caused by people's beliefs in areas like vaccination, climate change or sexuality. And there are also a lot of people out to take advantage of false beliefs, like expensive homeopathic remedies. But these aren't the kinds of issues I'm focused on today. I spent a long time not understanding what it meant when someone told me they were spiritual but not religious. I suppose I still don't know how other people understand that, but this is where it's fallen out for me. A love of the rituals I choose for myself and an acceptance of the irrational. If I admit to my habits, I risk coming across as really dippy and maybe appropriating things I have no right to. But I don't see much alternative, and a lot of that's unfair. If there's one thing I'm inclined to believe, it's that every person thinks ridiculous things. The only thing that changes is how self-aware people are about it. The build-up again. This becomes a mix of light and heaviness, drifting away to this strong, underlying beat. And then the melody comes in to let us actually drift away. I do like the bit in the Bible about not trying to remove a speck from your brother's eye while ignoring the log in your own eye. And to me at least, judging irrationality isn't very different from judging sin. Eyes closed.